Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of BHP Group Limited, ticker symbol BHP. We're looking at BHP today because the company is trading near their 52 week lows. They have only a 4 PE and they're paying out a 14% dividend yield. So all of those factors together may potentially be signaling that the company is cheap right now. We're going to dig deeper into their financials and try to determine if that's the case. So currently BHP is trading for $48.87 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is down 11%. Over three years, their stock price is flat. Over five years, their stock price is up at a rate of 4% compounded annually. Over 10 years, it's actually down 3% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, BHP's stock price has returned 4.5% compounded annually. Keep in mind that these returns are not including dividends. So BHP is trading about a dollar over their 52 week low, which is about $30 off of their 52 week high. They are an Australian business and their market cap is 193 billion Australian dollars. This equates to about 124 billion USD. So they're a very large business. So for some more background about the business, BHP is a leading global diversified miner supplying iron ore, copper, coal, and petroleum. The merger of BHP Limited and Billiton PLC created the present day BHP. Shareholders in each company had equivalent economic and voting rights in BHP as a whole. And in 2022, they voted to reunify the dual listing structure. Major assets include Pilbara Iron Ore, Queensland Coking Coal, Escondida Copper, and until just recently, conventional petroleum assets, principally in Australia and the Gulf of Mexico. The business's onshore U.S. oil and gas assets were sold in 2018, and the remaining petroleum assets were spun off and merged with Woodside in June of 2022. The company was founded in 1851 and is headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of BHP based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. It's going to continue to improve and get better over time. So with that said, let's get right into our analysis. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are captured here by return on capital. So by asking for businesses that are twice as good as average, we can build in some margin of safety for ourselves based on the overall quality of the business. In all five of these years, BHP produced above average returns on capital, which were above the 14% metric we were looking for. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, they've steadily increased their returns on capital as the price of the commodities that they mine have gone up. Averaged out, BHP is earning 27% return on capital in a given year. In their last 12 months, they earned 47% returns on capital, which are nearly seven times better than the average business. So this is a massive check here to start off on metric number one. Keep in mind that as a commodities business, their returns on capital are going to be heavily dependent on the commodities that they're producing. To really know this business in depth, you're going to have to understand both commodity markets and then how this business is able to operate in relation to those markets. So specifically, you'd be looking at the cost of these commodities that this business would be breaking even, then trying to weigh the probabilities of what those markets would do from there. So that's not something I'm an expert in. However, that is something I would highly recommend as being a prerequisite before considering yourself an expert at understanding BHP. Anyways, this is a check on metric number one. Metric number two, we're taking a high level look at the cash coming into the business. So we want their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. So in the past five years, BHP has grown their revenues by 50%. Their earnings have 10 x although it looked like they were coming off of a small base in 2018. And with their spinoff this year, their earnings were potentially inflated and their free cash flows have more than doubled. So this is another solid check here on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at per share metrics. So specifically, we wanna see earnings per share growth over the last five years. Their earnings per share have more than doubled over this time. 
the business has both increased their earnings and they've decreased their shares outstanding. In the past five years, BHP has bought back a small amount of shares, about 5% of their shares outstanding. But that still helps if you're a long-term shareholder in this company. Because when you're purchasing a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. When a company buys back shares by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which is ultimately going to increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to. We love it when a business is able to buy back shares when the company is trading for below its intrinsic value as it ultimately adds value for existing shareholders. This is another great sign to see here on metric number three. This is another check, and so far we're three for three. Metric number four is very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. Very similar to their earnings per share, BHP has more than doubled their free cash flows per share in this time frame, from $2.37 in fiscal 2018 up to $5.15 per share in fiscal 2022. This is yet again another check here. So to recap where we stand, we are four for four through four metrics. Next up, metric number five, we want the business's net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced in the past five years. So this one is not even close. Currently, the company only has $713 million of net debt, and in the last five years, they produced over $80 billion of free cash flow. This is a massive, massive check here on metric number five. The company is extremely cash flow generative and hardly employs any leverage in their business relative to the cash flows that they're able to get out of their business. Again, both their cash flows and their return on capital are going to be heavily dependent on commodity pricing. But it's great to see here that the business is not overly levered and is generating such strong cash flows. In the last 12 months, the business has produced $28 billion of free cash flow. That is nearly a fifth of their current market cap. We're perfect so far through our first five metrics. Finally, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want BHP's average free cash flow to total enterprise value yield to be above 5%. This will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury, and it'll give us a reason to potentially be interested in the business. So in the case of BHP, they currently have a total enterprise value of $130.5 billion. We learned that over the last five years, they produced $80 billion of free cash flow, which means that in an average year, they're producing $16 billion of free cash flow. So when we take their average free cash flow of $16 billion and divide that by $130 billion here, we get an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 12%. So that is more than double the metric we're looking for. Another massive check to end on here on metric number six, and BHP has been a perfect six for six metrics for us. In addition to this, based off of their last 12 months of free cash flow, they've generated $26 billion over that time. And if you compared that last 12 months of free cash flow to their enterprise value currently, you would get a 20% free cash flow yield. So the business is trading for only five times free cash flows. So if the business is able to keep operating efficiently and commodity pricing stays high, meaning that they're able to keep these free cash flows up even for just a while longer than what their stock price is reflecting, it looks like this business could potentially be quite cheap right now. However, just because that's the case and they have such a high free cash flow yield, then they were a perfect six for six on the select six analysis here. This does not mean that you're going to run out and go buy the business right away. This type of analysis is not financial advice and it is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Instead, this analysis serves as a holistic beginning understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time to dig in and learn more about the business. We'll talk about how to do that in just a little bit here, but let's look at their dividends first. So here we're taking a look at their dividend profile. Currently, BHP Group pays out a 14% dividend yield. However, People make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at whether a business's dividends are supported by their cash flows. In four out of these five years, that was the case. In 2019, the company issued a special dividend, and while their normal dividends were supported by their cash flows, that special dividend was actually not supported by their cash flows. That might be something to look into in terms of capital allocation. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, the business's cash flows have significantly increased. And as their cash flows have increased, they've increased their dividends per share. 
So it looks like BHP's dividend payouts are pretty well pegged to their cash flows. Again, they're a commodities business, so these cash flows are going to depend on commodity pricing. And you're going to want to learn the exact prices that BHP's operations are able to break even in terms of commodity pricing. If the company's dividend is part of your consideration of why you're interested in the business, in the event that we would see a decline in commodities markets and this business would see a decline in cash flows, be on the lookout that they would also be reducing their dividend payments. It would be a bad capital allocation move for a company to still be paying out more dividends than their cash flows are able to support. So that's just a possible scenario, but that is something you'd want to keep an eye out if that's the case. Again, here we're looking at the past five years of their performance when it comes to dividends, and this is no guarantee for how they're going to pay things out into the future. However, through both their high dividend payouts and the fact that they bought back some shares over this time frame, BHP has been returning a lot of their free cash flows to shareholders, so shareholders have gotten a lot of value out of the business over this time frame. In summary, BHP is a perfect 6 for 6 on the Select 6 analysis. The business earns above average returns on capital that are nearly four times better than average, twice the metric we were looking for. They've seen strong growth in their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows. They've also bought back about 5% of shares in the last five years, so their per share metrics have increased as well. The company utilizes very, very tiny amounts of debt relative to the free cash flows that they're bringing in. And currently both their average and their current free cash flow to enterprise value yields make this business look potentially highly attractive that they'd be giving a strong premium to the risk-free rate currently. And the business is paying out a 14% dividend yield. However, BHP is a commodities business. So any sort of competitive advantage would depend on being a low cost producer and both their free cash flows and their return on capital are going to be heavily dependent on the price of commodities overall. So to reiterate, this analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any investment, it's important to consult with the properly registered and licensed financial and legal professionals. This analysis serves as a beginning holistic understanding to help you learn if BHP Group is worth your time to dig in and learn more. If you're interested in learning more about the company and doing your own homework, I would highly recommend diving into the business's 10Ks. You can learn a history of the company by reading through all of their 10Ks. It'll help you understand how the business has operated historically in their highly cyclical mining commodities industry. It can also cue you into some of the potential risks and opportunities that the business faces, and you'll get a sense for management and how they're approaching capital allocation going forward. As a value investor, you want to do your own homework and come to understand a business that you're interested in as if you would own 100% of that business, where you can be comfortable that you understand the business's essence and really know all of its ins and outs. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of BHP Group Limited, ticker symbol BHP. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about BHP with me, and have a great day.